Hello there. Welcome to another Backlot tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a walking animation and position the character properly so that it appears realistic. So let's jump right in. So you could do this animation on just about any of the scenes in Backlot. I'm going to show you how to do it on New York Street. It's one of my favorite scenes. It's pretty robust. It's got some, uh, some really neat features built into it. Um, and it's a, a relatively simple scene to load. So as we load the scene, the first thing I like to do is make the uh, scene view uh, full screen or almost full screen. For this particular tutorial, uh, I am going to need the timeline visible down at the bottom uh, so that we can animate our character and uh, properly position them. Uh, generally speaking, I always make my animations at least 10 seconds long. We're going to go to the library. Uh, go down to the characters. It really doesn't matter which character you use, so I'm just going to grab the first character that pops up. So once your character loads, I'm going to drop him onto the sidewalk because obviously we want him walking on the sidewalk. Now hitting the W key is going to bring up your position. Uh, e key brings up your rotation handles. I'm going to position him uh, roughly in the middle of the sidewalk. And that's going to be his path of travel. I'm going to have him walking down the sidewalk. This will be a real simple tutorial. Now, you want to go to your animation library and uh, type in walking. Uh, actually, what's going to work better is slowly walking uh, or walking slow. Uh, your search parameters will bring the various walking animations up in different order. Um, maybe a, a, an area for future work by backlot. Um, sometimes the search parameters aren't quite as intuitive as they should be. It's worth noting that when you're using backlot as a pre-visualization tool, this might not be that important to you. Uh, but if you want your pre animations to look more realistic, this is a really quick and relatively easy way to do it. So we're going to choose slowly walking forward. We're going to add that to our character. And then we're going to scroll down in the timeline. I'm going to grab the end of that slowly walking forward animation and click and drag it to the end, which extends the animation loop. I'm going to rotate him so he's facing in the right direction. Some of the animations orient the character in a different direction than what you may have them in your scene already. Uh, so it's important that once you add the animation clip to that character that you reorient them properly. And I'm going to put him like you know, right in the middle of the sidewalk there. Maybe off to the side just a little bit so that that red direction handle is parallel to the lines in the sidewalk. Now here's what's crucial. You want to make sure your keyframes are set to linear. This is because the smooth keyframe adds an acceleration and deceleration curve, meaning that when they start moving, they're going to start from a standstill and slowly build up the speed. And then before they stop, they're going to slow down. That's not how people walk, really, um, especially since we're not including him starting to walk. Once he's already walking, he is walking at a constant speed. So you want your motion between your beginning and end keyframes to be linear. So we're going to set that to a linear keyframe. I'm going to zoom out and I position my view so that I can see the entire space he's going to be walking in. I'm going to go to the end of the animation. I always like to go a little bit past it and I'm going to drag that red handle and bring him down the sidewalk to where I want him to end up. I'm going to create a position keyframe and then I'm going to test it out. Now, as you can see, as he's walking, his feet are sliding forward. This is because the amount of time that I've allotted for him to walk that distance is too short. So what the program does is it's going to make sure that he gets from point A to point B in the time allowed, even if it means him sliding across the sidewalk. So what you want to do is one of two things. 
you want to either shorten the distance he walks or lengthen the amount of time that he walks. So it's either shorter distance over the specified time or a longer time to allow for the specified distance. Since I want him to walk to the end of the sidewalk, I'm going to lengthen the animation. Drag that yellow bar out to lengthen your animation. The yellow bar represents the length of your animation. So even if your keyframes extend beyond that, your animation stops where that yellow bar ends. We're going to replay the animation and see how we're doing. I'm going to position the scene camera so it's close up on his feet. And as you can see, that he's still sliding. So I'm going to take that end keyframe. And at this point, you don't need to extend the animation all the way because what I'm going to do is I'm only going to be playing the first few seconds of the animation because I'll know right away if his feet are going to be sliding or not. I'm going to lengthen it a little more. He's still sliding forward, so I'm going to lengthen it just a little bit more. And then one thing I'm going to do that I forgot is I'm going to change that end keyframe to linear. Making that end keyframe linear is crucial. You see, now that I've made it linear, his feet aren't sliding forward. You can see his feet are still sliding sideways a little bit, but that's more the animation preset than the positioning. That looks pretty good. Might be sliding a little bit, so I'm going to make a slight change. So I'm going to lengthen it just a little bit, and then I'm going to lengthen out the animation. And then I'm going to, I'm going to move the camera out a little bit because we're not going to be doing a shot of his feet as they walk. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera to where I want it to be for uh, creating the actual video. I'm going to position it. I'm going to focus it on him. I'm going to create a camera keyframe. I'm going to go to the end there. And now what you see is that's where the animation clip stops. So I'm going to go to the character on the timeline. That slowly walking animation clip. I'm just going to click and drag it right to extend that loop so that the walking animation loops until the end of our uh, animation timeline. But as you can see, as he walks closer to the camera, uh, not only do we lose focus, but we also, he, his head gets cropped off. So I'm going to position the camera so that he stays in frame. I'm going to focus it on him. I'm going to create a camera keyframe first. Then I'm going to focus it on him. What creating a focus keyframe at the end of the animation does is it ensures that at the beginning of the animation, he's in focus, and at the end of the animation, he's in focus. But I'm also going to go to about the halfway point, create another camera keyframe, click on him, and refocus him. This way, as he walks forward, the camera rechecks focus about halfway through. And if you hover over the camera view window, you can see that the focus distance is changing as he gets closer to the camera. You may have noticed the ISO bounces back and forth between 200 and 199. I don't know why it does that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a camera because I want to render this video out and I want to have a couple of different camera views. Now by default, the cameras come out at 1600 ISO, which is way too high for daytime. So I'm going to balance uh, the aperture and shutter speed to darken the image just a little bit so it's not so blown out. What I'm going to do, this is going to be a side profile shot, kind of like somebody walking beside him. Now it's worth noting, you may notice that when I'm in the scene view and I need to move or rotate the camera, uh, that I'm clicking on the lower left hand side of the scene view where you have... Uh, the direction handles rotation, uh, and then the actual pan head for the camera. With models in scenes in Backlot, you can just hit the W and E key um, to move and rotate. 
W for move, E for rotate, um, R for resize. This doesn't work on cameras and lights. Um, not sure why, uh, but you have to use those icons in the lower left of the scene view. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is position that camera accordingly. Sometimes when you're far away from the camera in a scene, it's, the movements are a little exaggerated, so I like to zoom in. And again, you can zoom in on an object in the scene anytime by going to the lower right-hand side of your screen under Hierarchy and double-clicking on the item you want to snap to. And what this does is it snaps your scene view to that object. I'm going to position him just right. I'm going to set my focus on him. And then for a little bit of added realism, I'm going to make this a handheld camera and add that handheld movement. I'm going to keyframe it at the beginning of the animation. I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to zoom my scene view out so that I can see the entire sidewalk he walked down. I'm going to move that camera so that it's roughly the same position it was earlier with regards to its position, its relation to him. doesn't matter if the one-way sign is in the way. Now what you'll notice is that the movement of the camera and the walking character aren't in sync. The, the camera starts out slower and then builds up speed. Uh, this is because the camera's motion keyframes are still on smooth, which is the default. So I'm going to uh, go down to my timeline. I'm going to select them all and change them to linear. And I'm going to hit play and you'll see that now the camera is matching his movement. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to add another camera. I think this one's going to be kind of a drone shot because I like those overhead shots. I'm going to take the tripod away because it's always weird having a camera with a tripod floating in the air. Not that having a camera floating in the air isn't weird, but yeah, it's just it's one of those things. I'm going to adjust the settings again um, to roughly match the other cameras. I'm going to rotate it so that it's looking down. And I'm going to make my fine adjustments. I'm not going to bother telling you what to set your rotation values at because it really depends on what kind of look you're going for. But with the use of drones becoming you know, pretty common, even in low-budget films, uh, I always suggest, if you're doing previs, uh, to include a drone shot uh, because you never know uh, when you want to use one. And drones are a lot easier to use on location shoots because you don't always have the luxury of being able to bring in a big camera crane. Right away you may have noticed that tree has a little bit of a glitch as the camera moves. There's just a slight glitch. I'm not sure if this is a clipping issue or a texturing issue. It's pretty common in backlot to have the camera's distance from an object dictate how that object renders. Um, I think it's just the limitation of the software. Uh, not a big deal, and in most situations, you're probably not going to notice it, and if you do, you won't care. Um, me, I'm a stickler for small little details, um, except for the ones that I don't catch, and then those drive me nuts later. But this one I caught right away. So the, the fix is pretty easy. So right about there is where the shift occurs. So what I do is I'm going to create uh, camera keyframes at that point right there. And then I'm going to delete the first set of keyframes. And then I'm going to take my second set of keyframes, drag them to the beginning. They're re essentially, essentially, they're replacing the first set of keyframes for that camera so that it starts beyond that little glitch. And now it's okay if I leave these keyframes set to smooth because it's a wider shot so it doesn't need to match his acceleration curve. And then I'm going to go and export.
And that's the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you in your endeavors using Backlot. Uh, yeah, I'm well aware of the fact that there is a cat sitting on the back of my chair. That's Winston, and it's pretty much all he does. Um, I've got an upcoming video that I hope you all will enjoy. Uh, it's going to be a, a comparison between Backlot and a program called iClone that I've been using for about a year and a half, almost two years now. Another very powerful previs tool. It's a slightly different animal than Backlot, um, but a powerful program that I think everyone should have in their arsenal. Uh, see you next time. Yeah.